Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So over the past several months, we've had several social security beneficiaries had some of their payments clawed back because of a huge mistake made by in fault of the social security administration. However, we actually have some good news just released. So we'll be covering that. Plus one lawmaker is proposing a pretty significant change to the social security tax policy. We're gonna be covering that as well. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $10,000 in free stocks or $10,000 in free cash, in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Moomoo. Moo. All you have to do is once you click on the link, it's just sign up for a free account and then deposit at least $100. At that point, Moomoo Moo will be sending you at least five free stocks worth all the way up to $10,000. And if you'd rather just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stocks, is just sell them for what they're worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so diving right into our lead story of today's video, and that involves Russia. So in Russia, just over the past few hours, they were actually attacked by ISIS at a uh, concert uh, that took place. And because of that, there were 60 dead and 145 injured. Just a terrible, terrible thing to happen. No matter what you think of Russia as a country or Putin as a leader, these are people at the end of the day and absolutely no one deserves to have this happen to them. So according to Fox News, ISIS claimed responsibility for an attack at a large concert hall in Moscow, Russia, area that left more than 60 people dead and nearly 150 injured on Friday. The attack began when gunmen donning combat gear burst into Crocus City Hall, where concert goers were gathering to hear the Russian band picnic and open fire. The gunmen also threw explosives inside the concert hall during the attack, which set the building on fire, Russian media reported. Now, according to CNN, the United States had actually warned Russia of this potential attack. So earlier this month, the U.S. Embassy in Russia said it was, quote, monitoring reports that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow, including concerts. The embassy warned U.S. citizens to avoid large gatherings on Friday following reports of the Crocus City Hall attack. It advised U.S. citizens not to travel to Russia, and U.S. National Security Council spokes Person Adrian Watson said the U.S. government had information about a planned terrorist attack in Moscow, potentially targeting large gatherings to include concerts. And this is what prompted the State Department to issue the public advisory. They said, quote, the U.S. government also shared this information with Russian authorities in accordance with its longstanding duty to warn policy. But in a, spe in a speech on Tuesday, Putin had blasted the American warnings as provocative saying these actions resemble outright blackmail and the intention to intimidate and destabilize our society. So obviously a terrible thing to happen and ISIS definitely needs to be taken out. Terrorism should not be accepted. And again, no matter what you think of Russia, no matter what you think of Putin, these are regular people in Russia. You cannot decide where you are born. And these are just regular people trying to enjoy their lives, going to a concert, and whenever you leave your house, you don't expect, I mean, if you're going to a concert, you're obviously very excited to see, uh, you know, whoever is playing or if you go to a sporting event and you don't expect something like this to happen. It's, it's terrible. So absolutely, um, just hopefully the world can come together and fight terrorism in this way. Take out ISIS and any other terrorist group. This behavior should not be accepted. But in some good news, we move over to Social Security. So over the past several months, people have been getting letters in the mail saying, hey, you actually owe the Social Security Administration that say like 10,000, 50,000, and even up to 100,000 or even more of dollars because of a mistake that the Social Security Administration made where they had actually made overpayments to certain beneficiaries. So they were saying that unless you pay this money back within like 30 days, we're just going to start withholding your Social Security payments. So people were no longer receiving their monthly social security check because the administration made the mistake of overpaying them for several months at a time. But we actually had some good news just over the past few days where the 
uh, commissioner of Social Security said we are no longer going to be withholding 100% of the payments. Instead, we are just going to be withholding 10%, which still is definitely going to be hurtful, but better than withholding 100% of the payments. So according to CBS News, the Social Security Administration said it's reforming how it recovers overpayments of benefits following an outcry over policies that drove some Americans into financial distress and even homelessness. By law, the agency must claw back overpay benefits, but SSA's policies had sparked outrage and concern after some Social Security recipients report reported surprise bills that demanded payments within 30 days. Sometimes the bills mounted into the tens of thousands of dollars. If they couldn't immediately pay the bill, the agency could dock their entire monthly Social Security payment, leaving some people financially destitute, as reported by 60 Minutes, KFF Health News, and other media outlets. In a statement issued on Wednesday, the Social Security Commissioner Martin O'Malley said the agency will seize the heavy-handed practice of intercepting 100% of an overpaid beneficiary's monthly Social Security benefit if they fail to respond to a demand for repayment. Instead, he added, the agency will limit the clawback to 10% of an overpaid beneficiary's monthly benefit. Additionally, the Social Security Administration will extend repayment plans to 60 months, up from its prior limit of 36 months, giving recipients an additional two years to repay the money. So still, it's going to be extremely difficult if you owe the Social Security Administration, let's say like 60, 80, 100 thousand dollars, uh, even if it is extended out to another, you know, two year, or another two years up to five years in total, it's still going to be very difficult. But you know, the good news here is that people are no longer going to have 100% of their benefit withheld. Still, 10% is still going to be difficult. But at least they're going to be getting something rather than nothing at all. Now, in some other news regarding Social Security, we had a lawmaker reintroduce a bill that will have to pass by the end of this year if they do want to. Uh, you know, make it come into law, that basically he is saying that it's unfair for those who are retiring early. So basically, there's a rule if you retire early, say if you decide to retire at 62, 63, 64, instead of your full retirement age, whether that be 66, 67, or somewhere in between. So if you retire early, but you continue working and you make over a certain income threshold, the Social Security Administration will withhold a certain amount of your check if you make over that income threshold. He's saying that's basically unfair and he wants to boost it up to where it is now, right around, I believe, 20, 21 or 22,000 uh, per year up to $30,000. And then of course, that would be attached to inflation from there on out. So let's go ahead and watch this video by a representative in Glenn Grotham. I'd like to encourage the body to pass the Senior Independence Act. When I was back home over the, la over the last week, as I toured my businesses wherever I went, be it in agriculture, be it in tourism, be it in transportation, be it in manufacturing, be it at retail, business all had the same problem. They couldn't find enough people to work. One of those reasons that they, I su they suggest I look at is currently under Social Security law and kind of a mistake that Franklin Roosevelt made, a reason that... Uh, uh, Social Security is great, but uh, uh, a questionable reason um, in the original way it was proposed, we, as soon as you make $19,500, you wind up losing a dollar for every additional two dollars you earn. This is causing people who would like to work more to stop working because the tax rate is just too high. It's time to pass the Senior Independence Act and move towards the point where you can make up to $30,000 before they take away your money, allowing more independence for our seniors and more labor okay. for our businesses. The gentleman so let me know your thoughts and comments below. Do you believe that beneficiaries of Social Security should be able to earn more without having their checks withheld. Now, moving into our final story of today's video. So not long ago, we had one House Speaker in Kevin McCarthy ousted by Republicans and Democrats from his role. And then he ended up later uh, stepping down and then it took Republicans a long time to find their new House Speaker. Well, it looks like their new House Speaker in Mike Johnson may be headed in the same direction as Kevin McCarthy. That is out the door as Marjorie Taylor Greene has just filed a motion to vacate him as the House Speaker, and it looks like they might actually end up having a vote 
very soon, even though Marjorie Taylor Greene isn't exactly saying when. So according to The Hill, Greene, who had merged as a top critic of Johnson since he took the gavel in October, said she would not immediately trigger a vote on ousting the speaker. She said this is basically a warning, but she asserted she may force a referendum on his standing in the House down the road. She said, quote, I'm not saying that it won't happen in two weeks or it won't happen in a month or who knows when, but I am saying the clock has started. It's time for our conference to choose a new speaker. So basically, Green and some other Republicans are not that happy that he allowed to pass uh, these government spending bills. And they believe that, you know, he's spending too much, that he's giving into Biden and other Democrats, that he's not being strong enough. And it looks like we might be once again down this road of picking a new House speaker. And we know how it went the first time. It took them, you know, several days to finally land on Johnson and... Yeah, just more craziness going on in Congress. Let me know your thoughts and comments below on all this. But that's all we have for today's video. Certainly hope you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it. if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.